Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be sharing the brand story of Kat Von D. KVD, KVD Vegan Beauty. There are a lot of names, but we will be discussing all of that in today's video. This is the next video in my brand deep dive series. I believe I've done six brands now, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that playlist linked down below. But I've been calling this series the rise and fall of blank. But for the most part in this series, we've been talking about brands that still exist. And when I'm referring to the fall, I'm speaking on the public opinion. I'm speaking on the popularity. Because in this series, with the exception of Makeup Geek, every other brand is still in business. But with Kat Von D or KVD, they're kind of the rise, the fall, and the rise again. So we will get into that in today's video. If you guys are new here, hello, my name is Kelly. I upload four videos a week and I really love doing these deep dive videos. So if you want to see more videos like this, I will have my playlist linked down below. Also be sure to subscribe and let's go ahead and hop into it. Okay, let me start off by saying the brand has changed names and rebranded, which we will obviously discuss in the video, but forgive me in advance if I say K Kat Von D when I'm really referring to KVD. I still regularly catch myself doing that in videos. I will edit them back when I mean to say KVD, the Kat Von D still comes out of my mouth. So forgive me in advance if I just use them interchangeably. Though from the beginning of the story, Kat Von D was accurately the name of the brand. So what I was saying is that with this brand, you can really sum up the rise and the fall pretty quickly. The TLDR is Kat Von D herself. TLDR, too long, didn't read. So in the other brands I've done in this series, I've talked a little bit about the founder, but not a ton about their personal lives because we focused more about their efforts with their brand and less about themselves. For this story, I think it's really important that we focus on Kat because she is most of the reason for the downfall for the brand. I would actually argue pretty much all of it, though some things probably could have been prevented if her team had stepped up, thought things through. But like I said, we'll get there. So the brand story is not just about the brand, but we have to talk a lot about Kat Von D. So Kat Von D was born in Mexico and her family immigrated to California when she was age six. I was also reading in some interviews that she did that she started tattooing at a very young age. So her fame before her brand really came from her artistic ability as a tattoo artist. And she started tattooing as young as age 14 and she actually dropped out of high school to pursue tattoo artistry. And she noted in an interview that her parents were very concerned about this, as I would imagine most parents would be if their child dropped out of school to pursue, I mean, anything. Just dropping out of school, I'm sure, would concern a parent. And that was definitely the case here, but she actually quickly became a very well-known tattoo artist. And she started getting a lot of publicity when she starred on a few like guest star spots on a TLC television show called Miami Inc. So I vaguely remember watching this show and even when I was doing the prep for this video, I didn't quite remember the timeline. I was like, was it really Miami Inc? I thought it was LA Inc. And there were both, they actually were both. So she was originally just in a few episodes of Miami Inc because another cast member had an emergency and they kind of brought her in to fill in, but she quickly became a fan favorite. Now, at this point, there was actually some drama between her and the other cast members. And because of that, she was not going to continue to come back on the show. And TLC then created a spin-off show centered around Kat called LA Inc. Now, I think this timeline is important because it lines up almost perfectly with the start of her cosmetic line, but she left Miami Inc. in 2007 and then LA Inc. came out in 2007. And that show was a pretty popular show for TLC. It ran for four seasons. And one year after the premiere of that spinoff show, 
was when her brand came into Sephora. So Kat Von D was actually started as a Kendo brand. If you're not familiar with Kendo, it is a brand incubator and I did a full video about brand incubators last summer that I can go ahead and leave linked down below if you want some more thoughts and background on what they are because they are huge. Many, many, many celebrity beauty brands start from brand incubators and another very famous beauty brand that Kendo launched was Fenty. So they have a lot of really popular brands under their umbrella and they started Kat Von D back in 2008. Now, Kendo is actually owned by LVMH, which is a giant parent company that owns a lot of luxury brands both in and out of the cosmetic realm. But LVMH also owns Sephora, which is the main reason we see so many Kendo brands partnered up at Sephora. And in an interview, Kat noted that she had no idea what she was doing when Sephora first called her to start this brand. And she actually noted that she told them, quote, I don't go to Sephora because it's freaking, I don't cuss on my channel, but you know what she said, it's freaking boring. Which feels like a very bold thing to tell the world's largest makeup retailer when they're wanting to partner with you on a brand named after you. But as you'll see a little bit more throughout this video and this timeline, Kat Von D is known for just saying whatever she thinks, not necessarily thinking it through, and I feel like that's part of that's kind of part of her brand. She likes being bold and she's like very unapologetic about it and that definitely gets her in trouble sometimes. So in 2008, when this brand came into Sephora, they had four lipsticks, two palettes, six eyeliners and brushes. And the brand really took off by 2017, which keep in mind is quite a few years later, but by 2017, it was one of Kendo's top selling brands. And if you watched beauty YouTube in the 2010s, around like 2013 to 2017, you are probably extremely familiar with this brand, like the Locket Foundation and Concealer were incredibly popular, the Liquid Lipsticks were also very popular. There were a few select shades that everybody wanted to have. The Shade and Light Contour Kit, oh my goodness, between that and the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Kit, that everyone had at least one of those in their collection, but I feel like many people had both. Now, with this brand, I think it's important to note that the brand is named after this person. And when it comes to celebrity or influencer brands, when the identity is so closely tied to that person, it's, it's very important that that person is not a controversial figure. And with Kat Von D, she absolutely was. So I think it's important in this video that we discuss a little bit about some of her controversies. Because when it comes to the downfall of Kat Von D, the makeup brand, like I said in the beginning, I think most of it falls back on her. So if you guys remember, she came out with a video a few years ago talking about how she claims she is not anti-Semitic and not anti-vax. However, behaviors, statements from her would suggest otherwise. So let's talk a little bit about that. So first of all, she married a man that has a swastika tattoo on his neck. I don't necessarily think your partner's values mirror your own 100%, but I do think they're rather reflective. Typically in 2008, she allegedly wrote a note to a Jewish coworker saying burn in hell. She is vegan and has compared the meat industry to the Holocaust. And in 2015, her brand named a, lip, a lipstick shade Selection, but spelt with a K, which is associated with Nazi Germany and the selection process at the concentration camps. She also, if you guys remember, when she was pregnant with her child, she made a pretty long Instagram post announcing that she would be raising her child vegan, you know, drug-free birth, whatever, and then she also noted that she would not be vaccinating her child, which rightfully received a lot of backlash. 
also in that YouTube video. Sorry, you guys, the light, the clouds keep moving in and out. So I feel like I'm trying to adjust my light. I'm going like too bright, too dark. But in that YouTube video that she posted, she then stated later on that she was uninformed and made people think she was someone that she was not. She didn't, she kind of just danced around it. She didn't really give us a clear answer aside from saying that she would keep her child's medical records private. Okay, that's honestly just a little tasting of Kat Von D, the person, but her brand also has been a little bit controversial. They've had some rather questionable shade names. Now, they're not the only brand to have questionable shade names, but let's go through a few of these. So... We already talked about selection. There was one named Underage Red, which I don't think I need to explain why that's inappropriate and suggestive. They also named a shade Celebutard. Okay, wait, I just turned down my brightness again. I'm sure now that I've done that, this cloud will move. But as I referenced earlier, Kat Von D is tricky because I'm uh, the person because she's not great about taking accountability. She kind of either deflects or is defensive, and that was what happened with all of these names. In a deleted tweet, she said, at the end of the day, it's just a, again, I don't cuss on my channel, but it's just a freaking lipstick. She has said she wouldn't change the names of these. Um, Selection did end up receiving a name change. Oh, another questionable name is actually Lolita, which references a book from the 50s where the narrator has a sexual obsession with a child whom he nicknames Lolita. Again, just very gross. And that's like their most popular shade. They've made Lolita 2 for a lipstick. Oh, see, now I'm dark again. But they've made a Lolita palette, like... They've just really, they, they ran with that name, even as inappropriate as it is. Also the brand, there was a very inappropriate Instagram post where they took their locket concealer. For some reason, they decided to pose it in front of cotton with the caption, let us do the hard work for you. I, I just, with all of these, like I can't imagine that there wasn't someone on the team that saw that first and thought, wait a minute. And I, I understand it a little bit more with some of the names, actually only with Lolita, because in that one, I'm like, maybe you didn't know. But with all of these other things from the brand, I'm just baffled that someone at the company didn't first think, hmm, maybe let's not. Okay, so again, that's really just a little sampling. But at that point, the public opinion of the brand had just declined greatly. People essentially had canceled the brand. I don't love to use that word, but I think in this situation, it's rather accurate. And at this point in the timeline, I was pretty convinced that this brand was dead. Like there was no comeback for them. And that was until Kat Von D, the person, announced that she would be stepping down, leaving the brand. I'm going to summarize this post because it's pretty long, but she said on her Instagram, this past year has been one of great change for me. As many of you know, I gave birth to my beautiful baby boy, launched my vegan shoe line, and am now busy preparing to release my long-awaited album in spring, followed by an international tour. As much as I wish I could balance all of this on top of continuing my makeup line, it has become clear to me that I just can't do everything at the maximum capacity. It's hard to admit this since I've always said you can do everything and anything, but I don't think admitting one's limits is a bad thing. With that being said, I've decided to sell my shares to the brand, turning it over to Kendo, my partners, for the last 11 years. Again, there's more, but I just, well, we're just reading a little clip of it to get to the point. So her story is that she was too busy and then decided to step down. I would speculate that that's not the full story. I can only assume that she was, um, that it was recommended that she did step down because had she not, this brand could not have survived. I'm honestly shocked that they were able to turn it around even without her, but 
As of today, she has no affiliation with the brand aside from it still having her initials, which she actually noted in a comment on her Instagram when someone asked about the rebrand. She said, I have absolutely nothing to do with that brand. And to be honest, I wish they'd changed the name altogether already so I wouldn't be associated with it. So the rebrand round one, they said KVD stood for Kindness Vegan Discovery. Rebrand round two, they say it stands for Cara Veritas and Decora. So the Cara Veritas Decora is Latin for value, truth, and beauty. I don't really love either of those name routes, but it is a little bit embarrassing for the brand to say, first we're going to be this, and then actually no, we're going to be this. But regardless, I do appreciate that they disassociated from the original founder. Like I said, I don't think that decision was Kat's alone. I can only assume that she was asked to step down. And weirdly, I was thinking about this earlier. I almost would have preferred that the brand would have come out and said, you know, we asked her to step down. We don't agree with a lot of her behaviors. But I also understand that it probably felt safer for them to choose this route and to have her say, oh, I'm stepping down, even if that's not the full story. But let's talk a little bit about the rebrand because I was a hater. I didn't think that they could make a comeback and they really have. And in my opinion, so much of that falls back on the app TikTok. So had this rebrand happened a few years earlier when TikTok did not exist at the time, I don't think they could have had the turnaround that they did. Previously, Kat Von D, the brand, gained so much popularity on YouTube. But I feel like a lot of YouTube viewers, especially viewers in the beauty community, are knowledgeable on what happened with the brand and had kind of written them off. Whereas they focused a lot of their marketing and advertising efforts into TikTok, where there's typically a younger audience. It's a lot more Gen Z on there, and maybe they're not as familiar with the controversy of the brand. Like they were kind of able to just like slide over that on TikTok in a way that they might not have been able to on YouTube. At least that has been my perception. We've noticed a lot of brands have a bit of a revival through TikTok. Even older makeup products going viral on that app, which is very different than YouTube. On YouTube, the products that are popular, viral, they're the new, new products. Once something is a little bit older, and I'm even talking like two, three weeks old, a month old, it's kind of old news on YouTube. But with TikTok, you can take a makeup product that launched 10 years ago, and the right video will make it blow up. I'm, I'm even thinking of the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light ones. Those are not a new product, and yet it's really only been in the last few years that they have reached this insane level of popularity. I mean, they've always been popular, but they're constantly sold out now because of how viral they've gone on TikTok. And that same style of video has really benefited the rebrand for KVD, mostly starting with their Good Apple Foundation Balm. This product, oh my gosh, you could not escape this on TikTok. And in general, I I haven't tried this, but the reviews of this are actually very poor. If you go on to Sephora, it has pretty low reviews. And yet the popularity of this product was just next level. Like this alone kind of brought the brand back. And then with their concealer, their contour sticks, they're launching so many new products that are rather on trend with current makeup trends. And they're pushing them to the TikTok audience. And this is something I don't feel all brands are doing well. This is one thing I think that KVD is doing right. They're finding the beauty and makeup influencers that are big on TikTok and they're sending their products to them. They are then just naturally testing them out in their video and or doing sponsored videos with them and then getting a lot of buzz. I feel like they've really identified their audience and a lot of their efforts are very TikTok heavy in terms of promotion. They also became the first Kendo brand to come into Ulta Beauty in the year 2020. We've now seen Fenty Beauty also make its way over to Ulta Beauty, but at the time that was a pretty big shift to see a Kendo brand 
sold at a retailer other than Sephora. And I think this brand makes such an interesting case study because the they really did the impossible. Like bravo to the team at KVD for saving a brand that no one thought could come back. And obviously I don't know the numbers behind the scenes. I don't know how profitable the brand is these days compared to what they used to be but they're almost becoming the it brand again they're so popular at both retailers ulta and sephora most people seem to have a positive opinion of the brand these days again i don't think they would have had it still been associated with Kat Von D the person. But I feel like even though they are no longer affiliated with her, they have kept a lot of that original brand identity. They think of themselves as tattoo inspired beauty. They have a lot of full coverage products. The styling of the packaging still feels reminiscent of like the early days of the brand. So I, I do appreciate that they kept what makes them unique while they evolved. So, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts down below. I will go ahead and leave the playlist linked if you wanna watch any other videos in this series. Also be sure to subscribe if this is your first video here and you enjoyed it. And I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.